I want to show you what I think is a really cool set of reactions. It is based on the fact that ammonia is a weak base, which means it doesn't dissociate completely in aqueous solution. It reacts with water to produce ammonium ions and hydroxide ions, but there's still uh, ammonia in the water. Okay, so what we can do is we can add aqueous ammonia to copper ions in solution. And the copper ions will react with the hydroxide ions in this, in this ammonia equilibrium and produce solid copper 2 hydroxide. However, if we go and we add more ammonia solution, what happens is the copper 2 hydroxide redissolves and produces this tetraamine copper 2 ion, which is sort of a, has a purplish color. And pushes the hydroxides off of this solid, so this redissolves. So here's a 0.1 molar solution of copper to sulfate, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of 0.1 molar ammonia solution, and you can see that right away there's this cloudy precipitate forming. And again, that's the copper 2 hydroxide. But if I continue to add the ammonia, we can see that it's still precipitate, but it sort of turns a more darker blue as we start to make that tetraamine copper 2 ion. And we're going to add some more. And you can see that now this, this is re, the copper 2 hydroxide is redissolving to produce that tetraamine copper 2 solution. You'll also notice perhaps that this copper species is much more deeply colored than that copper 2 ion in water. And in fact, we can use this dark purple color as sort of a, so, you know, as a nice spectrophotometric test for copper ions in solution. And so again, we've gone from a solution to a solid to a solution just by adding increasing amounts of ammonia.